Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Frank Tamora and I got another short video for you for July the 31st, 2012. And this is, a, to me, this is really exciting news because this is what both God in the Old Testament talked about and Jesus Christ himself mentioned it. And uh, you'll be able to click to the links when you get to my website at BibleProphecyMan.com and, uh, and you'll also have access to my book for free as well by clicking this link. So what I'd like to do is just go right in there and uh, show you what I'm talking about. And first of all, let me connect two prophecies with you because in the Old Testament, we're told by the prophet Zechariah that in the last days, well, let me just read it for those of you who may never even read this. It says this, And in that day will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut into pieces, though all the people of the earth are gathered again, to, uh, gathered together against it. So we know that in the last days, everyone will be coming against Israel and Jerusalem. Obviously, that's where the Israelites, or the Jews are in Israel, and the capital is Jerusalem. And so we're told that everybody is going to come against these people in the last days, not just some of us, uh, and, and that wouldn't mean include us, I mean the Christians, but the, the non-Christians who are left behind after the rapture of the church. Everybody will uh, be coming against Israel in those days because obviously people will be against God thinking that they can destroy his people Israel. And of course we do know from Scripture uh, in Psalm 132, it talks about the, the dwelling place, the resting place for uh, forever and ever, when this is for God. And here I sit uh, enthroned, for I have desired it. So we know that there's going to be a third temple that will be rebuilt. But what really shows us ironclad is Daniel 9.27, it says this, And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And it's talking about the Antichrist here, who's going to make this agreement for a period of seven years. Um, that's the You could do a study on it, but this is in reference to one week. One week is seven years. And when you get into my book, I'll uh, break this down for you, make it nice and easy. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the obligation to cease. Now he is referring to the Antichrist. So what it is telling you is the Antichrist will go into this new third temple, Jewish temple, that they're going to be building, and I believe it's going to be shortly, uh, that the Antichrist exactly halfway through this seven year period of time, he's going to go into this temple and claim that he is God, he's going to stop the sacrifices, and of course, at that point, everybody who uh, did not believe in Christ will understand they missed, they missed out on the precious gift of salvation by grace because they were left behind during the tribulation period. So the Antichrist comes, he confirms a covenant, he'll do this for a period of one week, or as I said, it's seven years, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and obligation to cease, he's going to stop the sacrifices, and for the overspreading of abomination he shall make desolate, even until the consummation and the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So that was in the Old Testament, Daniel 9.27. And then Jesus refers back to Daniel, listen to what he says. And when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by the Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Now the holy place is the temple, the third temple that will be rebuilt. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. So the Lord wants you right now to understand what is going to happen before it happens. And so if you're one of the people, they have the mindset that Jesus isn't true, that there's no hell, that there's no heaven, you're, whatever your problem is, that the Antichrist or the spirit of the Antichrist is actually Satan has blinded you from the truth. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart today to show you about things that are currently taking place and the things that are coming to pass based on what we know the Lord has promised were going to take place. And then the last one in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Again, 
speaking about the Antichrist, thinking that he's God, he's going to go into this temple, uh, he's going to exalt himself, he's not going to exalt any other God. Muslim, Buddhist, I don't care what God it is, he's not going to exalt any other God except himself. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ has told us. So what what to expect? Well, what to expect? You need to expect that this temple is going to be rebuilt. Now, in my book, I give you a timeline of all the different events that have been taking place that shows us that this temple uh, is, is very, very close to being rebuilt. And again, there was news about this today. Very, very exciting news that I want to bring to your attention. So let me go right to the news. When you get to my site, you'll be able to click this. And uh, as you can see here, let me bring it up first. It says in the article, the, the Jewish home MK calls for a third temple in Jerusalem. People, this is not a coincidence. Not a coincidence. God said it was going to happen. We saw right out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. He warned us about what Daniel said. And now it's not a coincidence that we're seeing the talk about the third temple being built in Jerusalem. So please pay attention to what the Holy Spirit it wants to show you. Now the article, MK, uh, for a massive reforms including a new basic laws in order to establish a third temple in Jerusalem. I mean, essentially, that's all you need to know. I mean, that we have people in the Israeli government who are now going to try to pass these basic laws, trying to uh, establish this temple. It will be done. One way or another, it will be done. Now, in an article the PDF published in advance the fast of Tisha uh, B'Av in the weekly Hebrew journal of the Olam Katan, entitled, internal and legislative reform. Olaf wrote that the temple must be rebuilt in Jerusalem and the fundamental changes to Israeli society and government were necessary in order to realize the success of the project. That besides spiritual reform and the creation of a cadea uh, of religious experts capable of running the temple, uh, Olaf argued that the government, assuming the government will choose to be democratic, must turn back the scent surrounding the project. It will be necessary to defeat no confidence motions to overcome the hostile left wing secular media and to ignore eye-rolling economists who will say it's a waste of public funds, he wrote. And it gets better, so please hold on. To forestall, forestall appeals to the High uh, Court of Justice, Olaf advocated that the legislation of the new basic law that would guarantee funds and manpower to protect the Third Temple from prosecution. Now, the law also protect the Third Temple project from accusations of the uh, discrimination, inequity of women in the temple service, and animal cruelty in offering of sacrifices, Olive continued. Now one thing, if you're new to the prophecy, uh, last year they went to the courts, to the Israeli courts, the religious, some of the religious people, and they got the court to go along with sacrificing animals, and they gave them permission to start practicing for their sacrifices. And now they're talking about the basic laws uh, so that they can build this third, third temple. And again, not a coincidence. So Orlev acknowledged that to remove the religious and political impediment, impediment to his plan, namely the presence of the al Mosque, which is, uh, these are the holy places on the Temple Mount. You see the Dome of the Rock atop the Temple Mount, the Muslim, the Dome of the Temple uh, or the uh, the Dome of the Rock is the third most holiest place for the, the Muslims and this has caused many many problems in the past and uh, as you see from the rest of the article you'll understand uh, what it would do if the they believe that the Temple Mount was actually uh, built or that the Jewish temple was built on that Temple Mount would mean that a billion strong Muslim world would surely launch a get this, a world war. 
Now, Jesus told us, we know it from in the Old Testament, that Jerusalem was going to be s surrounded by everybody. And definitely Jerusalem, this city, is a burden for all the nations. So we even see that part of the prophecy has already come to pass. And of course, the Zechariah 12.3 prophecy of all the nations will be fulfilled during the tribulation when they all come against Israel during that time. Then it goes on to say, however, he added that everything political is temporary and there is no stability. And of late, we're witnessed dramatic political changes that have occurred in many Arab countries. Ola recently advocated the bill to bypass the high court of justice and to protect illegal construction buildings in the Bet El neighborhood of uh, Gav and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that was struck down by the Knesset in June. So there's a lot of things going on in Israel that they want to get done. They want, definitely, they want to get this third temple built. And they know that in the past there's been political turmoil that could cause a war. And uh, let, let's just say this. If there's one scenario that you might want to uh, keep in mind here when we're discussing this, because that scenario uh, would mean that uh, if the nations saw that the Israelis were building their third temple, uh, they might try to swoop down in right away. And of course, you can have at that point, you can have Psalm 83 fulfilled, where the Arabs bordering Israel uh, would try to take Israel out, as the, the prophecy says. So there's a lot to be looking at in the Middle East, but this is exciting news, and I'm sure that if the apostles were reading the news that I'm reading and that I'm showing you, they would definitely be excited knowing that their Messiah, Jesus Christ, his words are all coming to pass, and soon this temple will be rebuilt. Now, again, for those of you who do not believe yet, all I'm asking is this. Remember what you heard, what you read, what the Lord has shown you, and then when you see it, you'll understand who the real Messiah is. Welcome everybody, this is Frank Tamora with the news for July 31st, 2012. And if you want all the links, just go to my site, BibleProphecyMan.com. I'm going to continue on with the theme is that I gave yesterday because there's more news pouring in on a daily basis concerning the droughts, the uh, the problems with the crops because of the droughts, the sun, the, uh, what the sun's uh, heat is doing to the earth. And of course, all these are the birth pangs of the last days that Jesus talked about. So very briefly, I'm going to just scroll down and show you where these prophecies are. And keep in mind that this is only a little section, if you will, of all the prophecies that we were supposed to be watching for in the last days. But I'm going to tie them all together because they all relate and all these things are taking place in one generation. And that's our generation. And that's the key. That's what the Lord said. When you shall see all these things come to pass, you'll know that it is near even at the door. No other generation has ever seen what we've been seeing. And so the first prophecy you'll find is in Luke 21, 25. And of course, we see signs in the sun. Uh... And this is why I yellow marker this. One of the signs is in the sun, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. And of course, you'll you'll see other signs in the moon, in the stars, and uh, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity to see and the rise warrant, which uh, has to do with the, the mighty storms that we've been seeing. Other signs of those birth pangs, and then we see in Revelation where. All of these signs will reach their climax, if you will. And uh, Revelation 16.8 tells us about the, the fourth angel poured out his bowl in the sun. Again, we're talking about the sun. And the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. Please keep in this mind as we go through some of the news. And uh, this, excuse me, this is supposed to be Revelation chapter 7, verse 16. But the hour got cut off. Uh, Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun, here we go again, the sun will beat on them, or not beat on them, uh, nor any scorching heat. So what, what this prophecy very briefly is telling us, that the people who came out of the tribulation, 
they're going to be affected or they would have been affected by all of these signs including the sun's intense heat which obviously they became thirsty and uh, obviously they became hungry and this goes hand in hand with Jesus talked about about the famines in the last days that would be coming up and of course in Revelation 6 6 the Lord shows us in this prophecy that people will be working all day long for very very small a meal it would be a quart of uh, wheat for example as we see here when you do a study you'll understand this completely and if you go into my book and you download my book uh, you'll understand if you don't understand already about this prophecy because I give you a lot of details about this and you'll find this in my book all this information so now the last prophecy has to do with the killing of the fish the birds uh, and you'll see this in Hosea Hosea and uh, so I'm gonna cut you know just bring all these things together for you and hopefully that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes that you could see what's taking place now the first article that I want to cover came out today uh, drought killing fish waterfowl threatened too so let me just go over here if you will and uh, of course when you get to my my website you'll have the links you can just go right to the links that I'm showing you here it says the drought and extreme heat remember combining all those scriptures about the Sun the heat and what's going to happen and of course as the Sun gets uh, you know comes scorching the earth and the temperatures continue to get warmer and warmer and the waters warm up the end result is you'll see this that the fish begin to die and uh, that's what's been going on now when you go into my uh, my site uh, and you Google Frank tomorrow why fish and animals are dying you'll see the uh, all of that information where the animals are dying the fish where they're dying it's pretty amazing what's taking place if you take the time to watch and uh, discover uh, that everything that Jesus is warned about is coming to pass so it says the drought and extreme heat uh, wrecking heaven across the US farm belt is killing fish by the thousand in lakes and rivers and could pose a problem to uh, migrating ducks and other uh, waterfowl if it stre stretches into the fall official said and then down here you'll have you'll see that in this particular case in Iowa uh, the losses were estimated at 10 10.1 million after 37,000 fish were found dead along the 42 stretch of the uh, Del Morris River and so what the Lord told us you know the, the worried about the killing of the fish and obviously they the fowls are being affected by this too this is what we've been seeing uh, in the news and again I make it very easy when you go to my site you'll see all of this listed by year and month all the way down for the last three or four years now the second article now we're going to start tying in the temperatures with you what the Sun is going to do the the extreme heat that we've been seeing every single year and it's getting worse always keep in mind that Matthew or uh, mark 13 8 where it says uh, these last day signs we're going to be like the birth pangs so let us go now to the next article and you'll see that uh, it says the triple digit heat intensified Across Arkansas on Monday setting records in at least two cities and increasing the danger of wildfires and of course Jesus told us about the fires that we're going to become but please keep in mind that these are the only the beginning of things to come the real real bad part will be happening during the tribulation and then I'm praying that you'll understand this now receive Jesus Christ and uh, be raptured out of the way so you don't have to uh, be caught in the tribulation period and if you think 111 degrees is high now wait until you see what happens to you in the tribulation when the max uh, these prophecies reach their completion and it's maxed out these temperatures are, are going to be uh, I believe very very uh, uh, low compared to what we're going to be seeing what the Sun's going to be doing during that tribulation period it says Little Rock reached 114 degrees we're talking about temperatures that five six years ago that you know the desert 
but now these are just ordinary cities that are getting record highs like we have never seen before now let me go to another one this is the heat record broken on Monday it says the mercury rose over 30 degrees Celsius for the first time this summer in eastern Finland as meteorologists warn the severe thunderstorms later in the day and of course Luke 21 25 talks about the storms that would be coming in the last days we've seen some pretty nasty storms coming as the weather begins to change and it goes on to say that the temperatures exceeded 30 degrees mark that's all that's a lot and so even down in here it talks about the storms more storms thunder severe storms are expected to whip up a very strong and gusty winds on Monday warning the FMI so uh, everything that the Lord is telling us we're, we're seeing and uh, it is not by accident or coincidence these are the things that the Lord told us keep on the watch for so here's another one you'll see July 31st Japan heat wave uh, death toll rises it's in different countries not just the United States it's happening many many places around the world these temperatures are rising and it's taken a toll as you can see from the article on people here it says at least 30 people have already died due to the extreme heat in Japan with more than 8,000 others rushed to hospitals including elderly people let me just give you a glimpse this is a glimpse of what you're going to see in the tribulation period could you imagine the temperatures get so hot that it starts to buckle the streets that it, it just wilts the trees it dries up the grass it dries up the crops the water shrinks so that now you can't even water the crops and there's very very f uh, little food left this is what Jesus shows us in the tribulation period let's go into another one now here's the you know when the Lord talked about these fires drought and wildfires destroy Russian harvest can you see what the Lord is showing you the food is being affected by the conditions of this planet and the Sun and they will get worse I'm not going to water down the message of Jesus Christ if he said that the last days would happen as birth pangs man that's exactly what's going to happen so Russia is currently in the grips of extremely strong heat wave now when you read my book you'll see it about two or three years ago and last year Russia has been dealing with the same situation but it's getting worse every year now you saw in the United States how Colorado and Texas went ablaze and on fire it's not just America it's happening in many many nations and also uh, Australia has been burning up as well last year and the year before they had problems and so these are the birth pangs again that the Lord told us about it says for example it is about 30 degrees 30 degrees in Moscow with with prospects of the thermostat going up in the next few days the heat wave situation is aggravated the wildfires producing a cause of poisonous smoke so we have a lot of effects of the Sun and what it is doing but again it's all they all they are are signs that uh, the Lord told us to watch for now the grain prices threaten growth except in Canada's bread basket now one of these one of the articles that you'll see here it says dry corn pictured in Oklahoma field while the massive drought in the United States has garnered a lot of attention the situation is made worse by the shortage of rain and that damaged the wheat crops okay so if you go back to my site here again where I, I give you some information remember what the Lord said about the wheat okay a measure of wheat for a penny and a measure or three measures of barley for a penny uh, there's no doubt in my mind that what we've been seeing over the last five years of destroying the wheat the barley the coin the soybeans and many other crops is a, a step getting closer to fulfillment of the book of Revelation these are definitely the birth pains that we're watching so 
the corn it says the uh, the grain prices threaten growth except in Canada's bread basket grain prices which are hitting record highs as crop failures ripple around the globe remember I told you it's not just the United States we're being affected worldwide I mean many many places around the world they're starting to understand hopefully understand uh, that it's going to get uh, the situation will get more intense now going on are likely to remain strong for at least three or, or, or more years and according to Jesus you better believe it so what they're saying is really running in line with the Jesus what our Lord Jesus is telling us from his word the World Bank says threatening to push guess what price of nutritious food beyond the reach of the world's poorest citizens so there's more information about this but I just I'm connecting the dots for you because this is again and I can't say it enough this is what Jesus told you to look for not just a Christian but he told everybody and the reason why he said this in his word is that when you saw these events taking place you would understand that his word was coming to pass and he is God and he is going to fulfill the rest of the prophecies which means if we're already in the birth pangs of this we're pretty close to the trap the uh, rapture of the church and the beginning of the seven year tribulation now let me go to another article here you'll see I'll blow it up a little bit for you excuse me uh, there you go so you'll see that this article chronic drought to become commonplace the scientists warn and for the Christians who, who know the word of the Lord we've been looking for this we know uh, what is happening but for those who don't know the Bible those who don't believe in Jesus you're gonna be caught in the dark uh, most of the world is caught in the dark right now they don't they can't make the connection to what the Lord said in the current events or what's taking place that are fulfilling prophecy now the four year long drought that affected the western Canada and the United States or it says here the US at the turn of the century was the worst to hit the region in 800 years say a scientist who warned the dry spell was nothing compared to the mega droughts get this mega droughts still to come so again if, you know take the word of the scientist because it's good here why is it good here why is it reliable is because this is exactly what Jesus Christ said all right it's going to get worse again signs of those birth pangs and of course when we're dealing with the Sun we've been seeing that the newer solar rays that are coming out uh, they've started they've been more intense solar storms are getting worse and this one says solar storm is expected to hit the earth on Tuesday so uh, a medium-sized solar flare erupted from the Sun this weekend hurling a cloud of plasma charged particles toward the earth on the cosmic path that is expected to deliver a glancing blow to our planet on Tuesday according to the space uh, weather forecasters so this is another one of these uh, events Sun events that are taking place and they are all part of prophecy now when you go in to the, my site you'll see that there's other prophecies that I talk about uh, deadly the seal flu virus poses a threat to the humans and the Lord Jesus Christ in uh, Mark chapter 21 or chapter 13 and Luke 21 chapter 21 and in Matthew 24 he talks about the diseases of the last days and I've been giving you countless information about the diseases that are coming up the super bugs that are coming up diseases that have been eradicated but now are coming back with a vengeance you'll see all of this documentation in my book and again this is just other parts of prophecy and you'll see again here's another one with Uganda says avid uh, handshakes as Ebola returns this again uh, in my book Ebola struck it disappeared it came back it's coming back with a vengeance and uh, and so forth so but the there are other 
articles as well at my site that when you click the link you'll be able to go right to those uh, sites I didn't make a video on it I probably will this afternoon but there's a lot more information uh, covering what is going on and uh, this particular one where the, the the Lord gave us the prophecy in Matthew chapter 24 you see the verses right here the, how he compared our generation with Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot's generation you'll see this in the scriptures as I point out here but uh, there is our generation has been a carbon copy of what the Lord uh, showed us through Lot's generation and Noah's generation and uh, just godless people people who don't believe in God uh, people who want to do their own thing same-sex marriage homosexuality running rampant not just in the United States but in many many places around the world now and uh, you'll, there's even a, a week, uh, a Newsweek article, Obama the first gay president. But but one of the uh, the most, and I'm going to stop it here for you, is the Psalm 83 war. And when you read the Psalm 83 war, you'll see that Syria is involved in this war. They're under number 10. And it's very easy reading in my book where I connect all the dots about this war. But Syria and all of the bordering nations with around Israel going to attack. This is one of the reasons why you're seeing everything taking place in Syria uh, right now is because Syria is destined to fill prophecy. They're going to be part of this prophecy of Psalm 83 and of course we know that they're also going to fulfill Isaiah 17 1 where that prophet tells us that Damascus is going to be taken away from being a city and rest they're going to be in left in a ruinous heap and of course I didn't put Jeremiah chapter 49 verses 24 through 27 on here and that also shows us what's going to happen in Damascus and Syria and that is coming up we know that Bashar al-Assad is under assault and he's going to make a move soon uh, especially if outsiders and you'll see that the Turkish are mounting a military on the border with Syria there's some uh, anticipation that outside forces will attack Syria soon to get rid of Bashar al-Assad and if that's the case you will see that uh, he may strike at Israel like he said hoping that all of these nations would join forces with him and if that would be the case it would end up fulfilling uh, the Psalm 83 war and of course I need to give you this information because this is very very important it says that Russia to keep Tarshish base now Russia will maintain a logistics naval station in the Syrian port of Tarshish and one of the reasons why they're doing this obviously is if you know Ezekiel chapter 38 now this war will be taking place after the Psalm 83 war when Israel thinks they're living in peace and security and we know that a lot of the peace and security that they will feel that they get is when they defeat their uh, bordering nations who come against them and uh, then we know that soon after that there will be this war the some or the uh, Ezekiel war of which we are told in Ezekiel chapter 38 and uh, you'll see it in chapter 39 as well that Russia is going to leave lead a force they will come from the northern quarters and you see that Syria is right in here right in the northern border but Russia has military fleets there and uh, that in my book I'll show you when they arrived and what they're doing there and make all the connections for you there but the reason I believe that they're there is because Jesus showed us in the Old Testament in the Old Testament Jehovah God which is Jesus Christ Jesus is the God of the New Testament but they're the same so we know that God is going to intervene when Russia comes down against Israel when the whole world will think that Israel is going to get wiped out and destroyed God's going to intervene we know that five-sixths of the invading army will be destroyed and uh, I, I really believe that this is why Russia has that military base here and they also by the way if you see this arrow here well it goes through Iran and Iran Russia has military fleets in Iran as well these are not are not coincidences so there's a lot to digest here a lot going on in prophecy 
and I encourage you to pick up your Bible, start reading it, but more than that, more than that, I encourage you to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior today because you're not at my site by accident. Uh, my site is kind of hard to, f to find because I, I never, uh, I haven't uh, paid any money to try to get people to come to the site. I always rely on the Lord Jesus Christ to send people to my site. And that's what he's been doing over the years. It's growing. More people are learning about prophecy. And uh, um, more people are uh, receiving, receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because of what they're seeing of the prophecies that Jesus gave to us. I'm just making a connect connection for you. And again, please take advantage of my book. It's free to you today. The Lord told me never to charge anybody for anything I do. And uh, it's coming to you today for free. So go to my site, the prophecy, BibleProphecyMan.com. Click this link and start reading. God bless.